In eastern Sudan, along the banks of the Nile River, a surprising sight interrupts the desert landscape. A collection of stone and granite pyramids, some of them towering nearly 100 feet high. However, these ancient monuments are not as famous as their Egyptian counterparts, and their existence has largely been overlooked in history. Located approximately 120 miles northeast of Khartoum, the Sudanese capital, these pyramids are remnants of the once great kingdom of Kush. This powerful civilization ruled over the Nubian region for millennia, stretching beyond the River Nile. Much like the Egyptians, the Kushites constructed grand monuments to honor their deceased, and the ruins of the city of Mero reveal their remarkable architectural achievements. Surprisingly, the kingdom of Kush, despite its vast territory and monumental heritage, has been relegated to a footnote in history, while the rulers and monuments of Egypt are celebrated and widely studied. While Egypt's Giza is teeming with visitors, Miro's pyramids remain relatively unknown and receive only scattered attention from archaeologists. The origins of the Kingdom of Kush can be traced back to the city-state of Kerma, which thrived in Nubia between the 25th and 15th centuries BC. This civilization, although initially rural and agricultural, began to rival Egypt in the north, controlling a significant portion of the Nile Valley. However, it wasn't until around 1500 BC that the Egyptians expanded southward and conquered Kerma, bringing their culture and influence to the Nubian people. The arrival of the Egyptians did not spell the end of Kush, but rather led to the migration of Kushite rulers to a new capital, Napata, located about 120 miles south of their original center. Here, they developed a unique culture, blending elements of Egyptian and Nubian traditions. Rituals were held at Jebel Barkal, a mountain along the Nile, where the Kushites worshipped an Egyptian god, Amun. Interactions and even intermarriage between the elites of both kingdoms occurred during this period. As Egypt's influence in Nubia waned, the Kushites emerged as the natural successors to the pharaohs. In the 8th century BC, King Pianki successfully conquered Egypt, establishing the 25th dynasty. Under their rule, referred to as the Black Pharaohs, the Kushites revived traditional Egyptian practices, including the construction of pyramids to honor their rulers. The kingdom expanded its territory as far as the Near East during this era. Over time, control of the region passed to Pianki's son Harka, who oversaw significant building projects in Egypt. Taharka's reign saw the revival of royal pyramids, with some theories suggesting he aligned his pyramid with the sun for spiritual reasons. However, his motives remain a subject of debate among historians. In the 7th century BC, the Kushites were eventually ousted from Egypt by invading Assyrians, leading to a retreat to Napata. Even there, they faced repeated assaults from rival empires. However, they continued to thrive, eventually relocating their capital to Miro, a strategic crossroads between the Mediterranean and Africa. This move proved prosperous, thanks to fertile Nile waters, which facilitated agriculture and trade. Miro's wealth further increased through the mining of valuable resources like gold and iron. As Miro prospered, a distinctive culture emerged, influenced by Egyptian, Greco-Roman, and African elements. The Kushite pharaohs ruling from Miro left their mark on architecture and arts, forging their unique identity in the process. The rulers of Miro, inspired by Egypt, constructed pyramids that were steeper than their northern counterparts. Unlike the Egyptian pyramids, these structures were not reserved exclusively for the elite. Anyone with sufficient wealth could be entombed in these grand monuments. Although smaller in scale compared to the Giza pyramids, the pyramids in Miro far outnumber those found in all of Egypt combined. Yet, despite their historical significance, this corner of Sudan remains largely devoid of tourists eager to explore these ancient landmarks. For centuries, the Kingdom of Kush thrived from its capital, Miro, and produced notable rulers, including warrior queens like Amanarinas, who ruled from 40 to 10 BC. Amanarinas, despite her partial blindness, successfully defended against the Roman army and symbolically decapitated a statue of Emperor Augustus, 
The Kushites developed a rich civilization characterized by pyramids, temples influenced by Egyptian religion, flourishing trade routes, and a unique language that continues to puzzle experts. However, in the 4th century BC, the power dynamics in Nubia began to shift. The Roman Empire's growing might and the emergence of the Kingdom of Aksum in present-day Ethiopia posed new challenges. Climate change also played a role in the decline of Kush, mirroring the fate of many ancient civilizations. One significant reason for the relative obscurity of Kush lies in the racist attitudes prevalent in academia during the early 20th century. Scholars like George Reisner, an Egyptologist from Harvard University, visited Nubia in 1916, but held prejudiced beliefs. Reisner doubted that the local black Africans could have created such a complex society, concluding that Kush was merely an outpost of Egypt. These prejudiced views hindered serious study of the Kushites for years. However, in the 1960s, Swiss archaeologist Charles Bonnet conducted excavations in Sudan, challenging the notion that Kush was merely an extension of Egypt. He dedicated himself to uncovering the truth about Kush, leading to a gradual revelation of its significance. Despite this progress, the legacy of the Kushites has been further hindered by practical challenges. Access to Nubian archaeological sites has not been easy, leading researchers to focus on more accessible areas. Additionally, the construction of the Mero Dam in 2004, located near the Sudanese capital Khartoum, threatened to flood a significant portion of historical sites along the Nile's banks. Archaeologists raced against time to salvage artifacts and historical remnants. Unfortunately, the completion of the dam resulted in the submergence of valuable archaeological sites, displacing tens of thousands of people from fertile valleys to arid desert regions. This sparked debates and controversies, with some accusing archaeologists of legitimizing human rights violations. Despite these challenges, some archaeologists remain committed to exploring the Kingdom of Kush. In 2018, archaeologist Pierce Paul Kriesman ventured to Nuri, where rising water levels forced him to don diving gear to explore the ancient ruins. His team discovered the tomb of Nastison, one of the Black Pharaohs. The tomb's inaccessible location suggests it may have remained untouched by grave rotters, offering potential insights into the rulers of Nubia 2,300 years ago. In conclusion, the Kingdom of Kush, with its remarkable pyramids and rich history, has faced numerous obstacles in gaining recognition in the annals of history. Racist attitudes, practical challenges, and the impact of modern development have hindered the study and preservation of this fascinating civilization. Nonetheless, dedicated archaeologists and activists continue to shed light on the hidden legacy of Kush, hoping to bring it the recognition it deserves. Subscribe for more.